Hey, welcome back, Mountain Adventures. It's good to see you again. I know it's been a couple of weeks since we last visited, since I last had time to produce a video. And finally, I uh, had a few moments to get together with you and, and talk about something. Last weekend, my trapping partner and I, Hastack Williams, were up in Pierre's Hole on the west side of the Tetons, helping a friend chink a log cabin that he's building uh, as an artist studio. And that was a great, uh, great time. We had, you know, a fun time working, a little bit of hard work, not too serious, uh, but great experience. Uh, gained a lot of information there about building cabins and just had a wonderful time. Pierre's Hole is just beautiful this time of year, still snowbound. Old Man Winters had a hard time releasing his firm grip on the country up there. And I was bragging to, to our friend that, uh, went, that the spring had actually come to our neck of the woods only to, uh, only to have it, uh, Old Man Winter make a surprise return here recently. So I'm looking forward to spring. When green up comes, we can get out and do more activities. Um, enjoy life. Uh, if you've never seen the, the Tetons, you really need to make that a point in your life to go out and see those mountains. They're spectacular. Unfortunately, the weather was a little thick while we were up there, and I wasn't able to see my beloved Tetons as much as I'd like to. But just as we were leaving, the weather broke enough so I could get a, a glimpse of the, those celebra celebrated peaks that, that I love so much. And it reminded me, as we were up there talking about research and things, that in the wintertime we spend a lot of time indoors, uh, researching, reading for entertainment, uh, maybe doing some art, some crafts, working on, on period gear, maybe working on our weapons, getting them cleaned, oiled, ready for, the, ready for use the rest of the year. And I subscribe to several magazines that are related to the muzzleloading uh, hobby and black powder. One of them is Muzzleloader Magazine, which has always been a, a fantastic magazine. Uh, sometimes I'll, I'll get a copy of On the Trail Magazine, either off the shelf or, or uh, at a library, a local library I know subscribes. A magazine I'd like to introduce to you today is called Tomahawk and Long Rifle. Now, Tomahawk and Long Rifle comes as a, a complimentary uh, subscription to members of the American Mountain Men, and it's produced by the American Mountain Men. However, you don't have to be a member of the, the, the AMM to subscribe to this fine magazine. One year subscription costs $20, and it's a quarterly, or you can get a two year for $35, or three year for $50. And if you enjoy uh, living history, especially the Mountain Men era, you would very much enjoy this magazine. A couple of friends of mine right now are responsible for production of this, both the editor and the design staff, two good friends. And they've done a fantastic job on raising the quality of this magazine, making it something that would be desirable for anybody who's interested in living history, especially the Western fur trade era, to, to read and, and have on their shelf for entertainment. Let me just read you a couple of the articles from this current issue. Um, there's two articles on trapping, one on uh, raccoon trapping and another one on uh, trapping as it relates to preserving our heritage of hunting and trapping, etc. There's a fantastic article by a really hardcore old Hiverno mountain man named Bob Stromonger. Bob's a member of the Jackson Hole Party of the Wyoming Brigade of the American Mountain Men. And he's got an article here called Winter Doings. I don't know if you can see that very well or not. And in the article, Bob talks about snowshoes and toboggans uh, in use by the mountain men. And as you recall, my, my video about snowshoes, talking about uh, the types of snowshoes and, and uh, the need for snowshoes by the mountain men, Bob here talks about how, um, in his estimation, many of the mountain men would have made their own snowshoes out on the trail. Uh, out of you know willow or some other supple, readily available wood and rawhide. Of course, they rawhide is quite plentiful. You know, with their um, use of big game animals, frequently buffalo, elk, deer, etc. And they had so they had plenty of rawhide to fashion those sort of things. And uh, Bob pretends that at the end of a, a season, in the late spring, that the mountaineers probably either discarded those snowshoes or broke them down and he kept the rawhide for use again and making a pair next year. And let me show you quickly a pair that Bob made. If you look right here, you can see a nice hand-fashioned field-use pair of winter uh, of snowshoes. Excuse me. And then also back here, Bob's made a toboggan using a, again a willow frame and a raw elk hide as the bottom. And at the end of the year, either just put that off and 
and leave it or, or dismantle it if you wanted to use the rawhide. So that's a great article, the type of quality articles you get in your average issue Tomahawk and Long Rifle. Another great article in here is called Riding the Old Spanish Trail by Oliver McCloskey. You may recognize that name from the video I did on uh, ledgers and gear of the Rocky Mountain fur trade. Oliver was one of the co-authors of that book along with Doc Ivory. Uh, Doc and Oliver are a couple of, another couple of hardcore get out and get it done mountaineers. They'll spend several weeks a year out on the trail writing about the Rocky Mountains, reliving the lifestyle of the Rocky Mountain fur trapper. So that's a great article. Really enjoyed that article um, as Oliver recounts one of his rides uh, along with a, a trapping partner of his. There's the article. Down in southern Utah where the old Spanish trail came through as it came up from Santa Fe wound all the way north through Utah and all the way then back southwest towards uh, Los Angeles in that area. So, really recommend this magazine to you. Um, I know that you'd find it enjoyable, worth your while. I've collected these for many years to a number of different editors. Always a quality magazine, a lot of good entertaining reading, and a lot of good information on how-tos, uh, history, research, um, book reviews. A fantastic magazine. Several times I've mentioned the American Mountain Men uh, in this video. And in the future, I, I hope to introduce to you in video uh, more about the American Mountain Men and how uh, you might want to, you might get involved if you had a desire to. It's a, a national club. I think it's the premier mountaineer club in the United States. Um, most of the members uh, were buckskinners, joined uh, or belonged to other uh, living history groups before they were invited to become members of the American Mountain Men. And you could find out more about that if you wanted to visit the AMM's unofficial website, Dean Rudy's website, at Mountain, I think it's mtnman.org, mountainman.org. Um, a lot of good information there. You could, you could uh, see a list of the requirements for joining the group, the organization. Generally what happens is a member will sponsor you and you go through a probationary period where you go camping and, and uh, uh, get to know members of the AMM and they get to know you and see you know both part, both sides are compatible before you are tendered an official invitation and then there's a, a probationary period after you sign up where you have time to get your requirements done so if you're interested check out that website check out this magazine I know you'll like it I want to thank those of you who have commented and sent me emails about uh, my project Teton Todd's Mountain Adventures I appreciate your your views on on YouTube and those of you who have subscribed so far. And I urge you to stick around. i got a lot more planned. And uh, as, as the project rolls on, the mountain adventure. And uh, once again, thanks for coming along. And I'll, I'll see you again soon. So long.